With overpriced upgrades and unnecessary features, the PS5 Pro feels like another costly misstep from a company already struggling to win back its fans. Wow, it hasn't exactly been a great week for Sony, has it? Concord was supposed to be their big venture into the world of online first-person shooters. After spending eight years and over $100 million on its development, it got shut down in less than two weeks because almost no one played it. Following a failure like that, you'd think Sony would need a major win something that could turn things around and bring them back to the top. Something that would win back fans who are starting to get tired of high prices and a lack of exclusive content. So what did they do? Naturally, they announced the release of an overpriced, unnecessary revamp of the PS5, the PS5 Pro loaded with features that most gamers will probably never notice or use. No disk drive, no vertical stand, and a $700 price tag. Enter the PS5 Pro. Tell me, which features are you least excited about? Is it the theoretical 120 FPS that you won't be able to perceive? because the human eye can't really distinguish frame rates above 60. Or maybe it's the 4K AI enhanced imaging that you can enjoy if you're willing to drop a few thousand dollars on a high-end TV that came out two weeks ago. Oh, and let's not forget the advanced ray tracing that's 50% faster than before, because that's definitely worth spending $700 on during a time when most people are struggling to afford rent or groceries each month. I have to ask, is the PS5 really so graphically underpowered that it needs such an expensive upgrade? When you think about the biggest complaints gamers have with modern console games, buggy launches, endless patches, updates, microtransactions, constant hand-holding, always online requirements, are graphics performance really at the top of that list? And let's be honest, we've reached a point where hardware limitations in gaming are nearly non-existent and any improvements in graphics are so minor that most people can barely tell the difference. Take the PS4, for example. It came out over a decade ago. Fire it up today, and while it may not look as sharp as modern consoles, it still holds up pretty well. That's because the law of diminishing returns is very much in effect when it comes to graphical improvements in gaming. Now, from a business perspective, let's be real. The PS5 has been out for four years. Under normal circumstances, it would be approaching the end of its life cycle. So why would anyone pay so much for a console that might be obsolete in just a couple of years? Unless, of course, Sony isn't planning to develop a new console generation anytime soon, and they're trying to stretch the life of this one by upgrading the current hardware. It's possible. The PS3 had a longer than usual lifespan, partly because it cost a fortune to develop, and Sony wanted to make the most of it, and partly because no one else was rushing to release a new generation of consoles. But if that's the case, it just creates more problems for gamers. Eventually, the Pro model will become the standard, no matter what Sony says now, and support for the original PS5 will gradually fade. Soon, the latest and most powerful games will only be compatible with the Pro. And then, Customers will be forced into an expensive upgrade they never should have needed in the first place. If I wanted to spend ridiculous amounts of money chasing the latest technology and dealing with hardware compatibility issues, I'd just go back to PC gaming. That's exactly why I play consoles, to avoid this kind of hassle. In short, I think the PS5 Pro is a bad idea from a business standpoint. It's an unnecessary change to a console that already does everything it needs to, and it's yet another PR failure for a company that's still trying to recover from a series of embarrassing missteps. Sony, you really need to do better. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. You can go now.